Hello everybody and happy Christmas. It's our last IGTV of 2019. So next time we see you, it'll be a whole new decade. And we're delighted to finish off this series this year with the fantastic Marcus Lamb, who graduated from the Gailey School of Acting in 2004. Marcus is currently appearing in the Abbey Theatre in Drama at Inish. So many of you have probably already seen it or will be going to it over the Christmas period. So we've been hearing fantastic reviews. So we're delighted to have Marcus in with us today. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. in in the horrible wet weather. Um, so Marcus, you've obviously you're in Drama at Inish at the moment, heading into a matinee later on, um, but you've been incredibly busy over the last 14, 15 years since you left? Yeah, about that. <laughs> you about probably that. don't like yeah. me saying that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so yeah, stage, screen, film, TV, um, and most recently, I suppose, or biggest this year would have been Dublin Murders, mm. and you're in drama in it at the moment. Is there a place where you feel more comfortable performing, or do you find that each of them has their merits? Um, they're, I love them both, yeah. obviously. Um, I find that with stage, I think it was Michael Caine who said that uh, uh, theatre acting is an operation with a scalpel and uh, screen acting is an operation with a laser. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a fancy way of saying one is more reduced. Yeah. Um, but I think he's right. I think with stage there's a lot more uh, the, the sort of transference, transference of energy and how you pull the audience's focus across. Mm. That's obviously the director's job as well. But it's more physical, more muscular, it's more language driven than screen. Um, I think with screen it's kind of the language of behaviour. Behavior. Mm. Uh, whereas on stage, I remember working with a really experienced actress who shall remain nameless, um, who was, was gave me brilliant advice. I was on one side of the stage and she was on the other. And I said, um, what should I do on this line when I come in? And she said, you've got to hit it really hard because I've been talking, the audience's focus is on me and it's to pull the focus right across. Yeah. Um, and I, that was good advice and it seemed to work. And then years later it occurred to me, it's, it stuck with me what she said in relation, in, in opposite relation, I suppose, to camera. Mm. In that with camera work, the editor decides everything. Uh, and the director, they pull the focus, they decide where the audience look. Yeah. So the less you do, um, the more you're sort of handing gifts to the editor, because if you're too messy facially, if you're too pulling too many faces and, and sort of overdoing it, then it limits what they can do in the edit. Yeah. Um, someone said that, that screen acting is, is moving photos and there's truth to that. Yeah. So the, th the thought, I mean, both my parents were actors and my dad said years ago, um, for a scene, if you're auditioning for a scene for TV or film, just find the, the rhythm of the scene, um, find a beat change here and there, and, uh, 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 and, and just find the thoughts, find the thought pattern of the character and let those, trust that those thoughts will come out yeah. with even a, just a movement of the eye or anything like that. Michael Caine has stuff on YouTube actually yeah. uh, on it. Um, okay. he's, he looks hilarious with his curly hair and glasses and he looks so kind of 80s, yeah. but he's got great tips on, uh, he does scenes from educating Rita with other actors okay. and you see the difference between an inexperienced actor and him mm. doing it. Uh, he's talking to the camera as, as the, the, the lead, um, sorry from Alfie. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then he does bits from Educating Reader where he's playing drunk and he just sinks slightly in the chair when he's drunk on screen and mm -hmm. then on stage he says it's a full kind of sl yeah, slump. Yeah. So ob obviously everyone knows you just do more on stage but yeah. it's, it's not quite as simple as that. It's almost like a different um, skill set. Yeah. You know? And do you find like that you're constantly training yourself and educating yourself more even on a daily basis. Absolutely. I mean, on, on drama at Inish, um, like genre is a big thing too. Mm. Like you could work in a certain genre, like kind of like police procedurals on TV, like mm. Dublin Murders or something. That's very kind of reduced and contained. Mm. And then um, move, like if you did something like Only Fools and Horses, like they say yeah. that they, they left gaps in the in this sort of type, like David Jason knew to leave gaps for the audience to laugh at home as though he was on stage, almost. I mean, does that, he had that comic timing uh, and that, that skill from years of experience of doing comedy. Um, so the genre is is very important. And with, with drama Danish, as I was saying, in rehearsal, um, just watching Cal direct and directing me in, in comedy in that sort of, I don't know if broad is the right word, but that's slightly more heightened farcical style of comedy was absolutely fascinating. But I remember doing, um, 
I remember doing a TG Cahar uh, comedy and I was watching The Wire at the time and that was a bad idea because <laughs> The Wire was is the most, I mean loads of people famously watched it with the yeah, subtitles yeah. on because you know what the hell anyone yeah. was saying. So I was watching that and getting really engrossed and then going on set and, and doing this slightly broad comedy when I should have been watching, as I say, Only Fools and Horses yeah, or, yeah. or Porridge or Father Ted or something exactly. um, to kind of get my head. So, so genre is important, like know yeah. what genre you're in. Yeah. Yeah. And um, intro, I didn't know both your parents were actors, so mm. was this like an inevitable career for you or was there a point or did you ever resist it? You know, it can go yeah. either way, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, there was, there was seven in the family. I'm the youngest of seven myself. My sister just above me um, got into the acting. Susie trained in the Gaty School of Acting as well. Yeah. She took a break to have a kid and stuff and she's kind of coming back into it. Um, but the, the five above, above us didn't. They went into the arts uh, pretty much to stained glass artists, etc. But I think being, I think just being brought to the theatre, you kind of absorb it. Like they couldn't get, I remember being in the, the Abbey rehearsal room when people smoked. I remember being four years old and there was just, yeah. just cigarette smoke everywhere and, and all the actors being sort of, it's, it's seeming really glamorous and exciting, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and then going to see plays and I remember not knowing what's going on, but being kind of enthralled. Shadow, uh, sh um, Shadow, of Shadow of a Gunman and the Silver Dollar Boys both stick in my head, seeing them, and, and then actually Tog and Gatto, which was If Gatto Arrives, an Irish language version by Alan Titley that my dad was in. He played, I think he played Estragon. And uh, it was on in 86, I think, in the Peacock, and it was very kind of well received. Yeah. Um, so that was my first kind of sort of access to Beckett, mm. I suppose. Yeah. And, and just the clownish quality of it. Um, and I suppose with the that and stuff. segues into one of my questions <clears throat> was um, all your work on In Mouth of Fire. I feel like mm. I saw you in the Focus Theatre. Yeah, yeah. Would have been, oh, 10 years ago? Yeah, 2000 and, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it was incredible. I think it was 2011. Yeah, that was that, that was with the white wig, a piece of monologue. Yeah, yeah. it was just That's my probably my favourite bit I've ever done of Beckett. Um, it's so intense, it's as though, I think someone said that, uh, who, who performed it, that, that Beckett knew what sort of mind state the actor would get into in writing it. It's sort of, it's sort of so intense that you can't help but get into it. You either you either get into it or you yeah. just don't do it. Yeah. So it's sort of I won't say easy, but it sort of helps you in that sense. Yeah. Um, that's like yeah, a twenty-two minute kind of monologue. Yeah, um, and the, the focus. It's such a shame it's gone because that was incredibly intense performance space, which does make a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, I went to see Death and the Maiden in the West End and uh, with Tandy Newton and people like that and terrific acting but the space was massive and it was just too big yeah. for the for the piece intimacy. so that's that's also i think important yeah. but um yeah yeah that was the first time i did beckett actually that yeah. piece oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 and so obviously you've gone on there was um i was reading in your bio you've done some incredible work uh, site specific work as yeah. well with yeah. beckett pieces oh yeah quite a lot yeah. yeah um we did some in um st stephen's psychiatric hospital across from houston station yeah. Uh, done quite a lot in the for, in the sex offenders prison in is it Port Leash or the Midlands Port Leash, and then for the um, political prisoners in the Midlands, and mm. then for the ordinary decent criminals in um, in in the Midlands, and also in um, quite a few times in Mount Joy, and also in Dolchus Women's Prison. And what is next? What's on in the agenda for twenty um, twenty? I'm probably going to be doing a, a play in, a, in one of the, the larger theatres, um, playing a, kind of an interesting, dark, slightly well darker character than in Drama at Inish. Okay. Um, but I can't okay, say so what it is yet because okay. nothing's been signed. Um, yeah. And then also play development for an exciting play that's we've, we've kind of been working on uh, over a couple of years, which hopefully will be on later okay. next year. Um, so two, two plays, hopefully, and see, see what see happens. See what happens. So busy, yeah. busy. So mm. thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you. Oh, because it's Christmas, we have a little keep cup. Oh, these, we don't yes. give these to everybody. Yes. There you go. Brilliant. We're branding Thanks you. That's lovely. <laughs> um, so uh, That's you can great. Great. Show, show your colours with pride Brilliant. <laughs> in the Abbey. Brilliant. Thanks a million. Thanks so much, Thanks, Marcus. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.